Greetings, and welcome to the AOS CX 10.11 release update for the new VSF Enhanced Software Upgrade, or ESU, feature for the Aruba CX 6300 Switch platform. My name is Matt Fern, and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer with the Aruba Switching Team. Let's start with a brief feature overview. VSF Enhanced Software Upgrade, or ESU, is a high availability feature for CX6300 switches in VSF stacking configurations that permits software upgrades with reduced data plane impact. VSF ESU utilizes the same software infrastructure developed for ISSU on the CX6400's chassis switch platform to enable stack software upgrades with only the stack conductor required to reboot during the upgrade process. VSF ESU and AOS CX 10.11 supports Aruba CX 6300 VSF stacks with upgrades supported within the same major release. VSF ESU support will be added to the four new 6300M models, starting with the AOS CX 10.11.1000 release. VSF ESU does not support major version upgrades or version downgrades of any kind. As for the types of network environments where VSF ESU might be deployed, is primarily intended for environments where high availability is particularly important, such as hospitals, industrial facilities, and municipal networks, though it is of course available to any network admin who has deployed 6300 VSF stacks in their environment. So now that we've talked about the what and the why, let's get into how VSF ESU actually works. VSF ESU is an orchestrated upgrade process, similar to ISSU, that performs five high-level steps in order. Those are validate system readiness, upgrade standby and member modules, upgrade line module services, prepare for VSF switchover, and then finally, finalize the upgrade. At the initiation of ESU, we validate that system and hardware conditions are in a state that will permit the upgrade to proceed without issues. Those include that all stack members are fully booted and operating normally, a standby is present in the stack and synchronized with the conductor, only supported VSF member types are present in the stack, the active boot image matches the currently running software version, the target boot image is newer than the running version but still within the same major release, no ACL policy or class applications are in a failed state, and the startup configuration matches the running configuration. If any of these validation checks fail, ESU is immediately aborted and the system continues normal operation. Once the initial validation steps have been successfully completed, the standby and member switches are updated using hot patching and non-critical software daemons are stopped. New database instances are started using the data format required by the new software version. The schema migration framework software component is used to migrate data from each old version database to the corresponding new version database on each member. Once the data has been migrated successfully, the old database instances are terminated. Hot patching and database migration do not take place on the conductor as it will instead be rebooted to the new software version. Once hot patching and database migration on the standby and members are complete, we temporarily halt the crash handler process on those members, which allows us to restart critical system daemons without rebooting the entire system. As each system daemon restarts, it connects to the new version database running on its respective system. Once all critical daemons are restarted, we restart the crash handler process to resume normal critical daemon monitoring. At this point, the conductor freezes the stack data plane configuration by cloning the main stack database to create the ISSU cache, which we then sync to the database on the standby via the schema migration framework. The hardware state on the standby and members is then frozen to allow restart of all remaining control and data plane daemons, which then connect to the new version database on the standby. In preparation for the VSF switchover, which is the final major step in the ESU process, a final database sync is initiated from the old version main stack database, which is still being updated by data plane protocol daemons on the conductor, to the new version database on the standby. Once this final sync is complete, the stack is ready for switchover. We trigger a controlled switchover to transfer stack operation from the conductor to the standby. We trigger that reboot via the system database. The standby will detect the loss of the conductor and assume the conductor role for the stack. Any remaining platform and hardware daemons on all stack members restart 
and connect to the database on the new conductor. Once the old conductor has finished rebooting to the new software version, it rejoins the stack as the new standby, and at this point, ESU is complete. While the SFESU is in progress, configuration changes are not allowed, which is enforced via config lockout for the duration of the upgrade process. Stack member changes are not permitted, while link state transitions and front panel button presses are ignored until the upgrade is complete. Temperature sensor and power consumption values, LED system state indicators, MAC learning, and MAC table changes via gratuitous ARP are not updated during VSF ESU. Conductor reboot, as part of the VSF switchover at the end of the ESU process, has some impacts on stack operation. All ports on the conductor will go down for the duration of the reboot. There's a potential for brief disruption in traffic flows on lags with member ports on the conductor, which is expected to be less than 750 milliseconds, with the exact duration depending on traffic flow rate and lag member port load balancing. Finally, a stack with a ring topology will temporarily become a chain. If the stack topology started as a chain and the conductor was not at either end of that chain, a split condition may occur, which may cause ESU to fail as a result of loss of connectivity between the new conductor and any remaining stack members, which would result in a full stack reboot to the new software version. Stack timer, which is disabled by default, starts when the upgrade is complete. The ISSU update software confirm command must be entered after the upgrade is complete and before the timer expires, or the stack will automatically reboot to the previous version. The rollback timer may be configured for a value between 30 and 1,440 minutes, or one day. The default value is 30 minutes. The two major types of errors that may occur during VSF ESU are recoverable and unrecoverable errors. Recoverable errors, which occur before hot patching or database migration, are handled by aborting the upgrade process and returning to normal system operation on the current software version with no data plane impacts. Unrecoverable errors, which occur during or after hot patching and database migration, are handled by rebooting the entire stack to the new software version. Scenarios involving errors during the upgrade process include failure to apply hot patches, any loss of connectivity between stack members other than the conductor itself during the VSF switchover, any critical daemon crash, or any unexpected VSF failover events. The two methods used to handle errors during the upgrade process are hitless abort, which is used for recoverable errors that occur before hot patches are applied. This returns the system to normal operation with no traffic impact. The other method is fail forward, which is used for any error that occurs during or after hot patch application. These are unrecoverable errors, which results in a full stack reboot to the new software version, with the traffic impact being that all ports in the stack are down for the duration of that reboot. So, now that we know how VSF ESU works, it's time to put it into action. The first step is to identify the active boot bank using the show images command. Look for the active image line in the displayed output. Next, copy the new software image to the alternate boot bank. In other words, if the active boot bank is the primary, copy the new software image to the secondary boot bank or vice versa. Do not copy the new image to the active boot bank as this is used for recovery in the event of an error as well as by the rollback timer. Once the new software image has been loaded to the alternate boot bank, Allow two to three minutes for the software image to be synced to all stack members. Verify that the stack is ready for ESU by using the ISSU update software validate command. The command output will show a pass or fail status for each condition that is checked. If all conditions display pass, the system is ready to start the upgrade. If any condition reports a fail status, ESU cannot be used. Correct the failed condition and try validation again. The results of the last run validation check can be displayed using the command show ISSU validation. Optionally, you may enable the rollback timer to allow the system to automatically reboot to the current software version in the event of an unsuccessful upgrade that results in a loss of management access to the stack. Use the ISSU rollback timer command from the switch configuration context to enable the rollback timer. The status of the rollback timer is displayed in the output of Show ISSU. If the timer is disabled, Not Configured is displayed. 
Not started is displayed if the timer is enabled but not currently running. And if the timer is enabled and running, the time remaining in minutes is displayed. Once the new software image has been staged in the alternate boot bank and synchronized to all stack members, you can initiate ESU using the CLI command ISSU update software. Once the system readiness validation checks are complete, the update will start. The show ISSU command can be used from the conductor to monitor the status of the upgrade. If you wish to continually monitor the ESU status, you can simply use repeat delay N to automatically repeat the show ISSU command every N seconds. Note that once the standby members have been updated and switchover prep is complete, the conductor will be rebooted, which will interrupt the current CLI session. If you wish to continue monitoring the ESU process, reconnect to the stack from the standby's console or management link to continue monitoring using the show ISSU command. Once the the former conductor is finished rebooting to the new software image and has resynced with the new conductor to reestablish redundancy. The upgrade is complete. If you enabled the rollback timer earlier, you must execute the ISSU update software confirm command before the timer expires to prevent an automatic reboot to the previous software version. There are a few best practices to take into consideration before using ESU to upgrade your VSF stacks. First, VSF stacks should always be deployed using a ring topology to minimize probability of stack splits and resulting upgrade failures. Single home connections to the primary or secondary members should be avoided, as whichever of these members is operating as the conductor will reboot as part of the VSF switchover during ESU. Lags should be used to distribute uplinks and downlinks to the extent possible based on the size of the stack and the capabilities of your connected devices and their bandwidth utilization. And finally, when possible, upgrades should always be scheduled during periods of minimal network traffic. Next, here are some tools and tips for when things aren't working quite as expected. There are two main show commands available for the ESU feature. Those are show ISSU, which displays a summary of overall upgrade status and a progress chart of the current or most recent upgrade. And then show ISSU brief displays only the top summary section of that first command. The Diag Dump ISSU Basic Diagnostic Command will generate more detailed system information related to the ESU process that can be used by Aruba support and software engineers to diagnose issues with the ESU feature. Upgrade failures will result in an error message being displayed in the Show ISSU CLI command output. ESU-related errors and events are also generated in the switch event log by the ISSU, VSF, VSF High Availability, and Hot Patch system daemons, and can be displayed using the Show Events command. The error message, No Standby Present, ISSU Upgrade Aborted, indicates that there is no stack member operating with the standby role. This can be caused by no secondary member being configured in the stack, or that the standby is either down or still booting. To resolve this error, ensure that a secondary member is designated in the stack configuration and that either that member or the primary is operating normally in the standby role. If this error was the result of a VSF member or link hardware fault, replace the affected hardware. The error message, ISSU upgrade aborted, one or more members are booting, indicates that at least one stack member is not in a fully booted state, which may be the result of a new member being added to the stack, a stack reboot, or potentially a hardware or software fault. Resolve this error by waiting for all members to fully boot and sync with the conductor before attempting ESU again. The error message, active image no longer matches the running software version, indicates that the software image in the active boot make no longer matches the stack's running software version on the conductor. This is typically the result of accidentally copying the new software image to the active boot bank rather than the alternative boot bank. Resolve this error by copying the software image matching the running software version back to the active boot bank, then by copying the new software image to the alternate boot bank instead. The error message, upgrade image already matches the running software version, indicates that the software image in the alternate boot bank 
is the same as the version currently running on the Switch, which typically occurs if ESU is initiated before the new software image has been loaded on the conductor. Resolve this error by copying the new software image to the alternate boot bank and allowing two to three minutes for the image to be synced to the rest of the stack before attempting ESU again. And with that, let's see what VSF ESU looks like in action. First, note the traffic statistics at the top of the screen. The first two lines represent bidirectional traffic through member 3, while lines 3 and 4 are a bidirectional flow across a pair of two port lags, with member ports on both the conductor, member 1, and standby, member 2. No impact is expected on traffic through member 3, while a brief interruption, less than 750 milliseconds, may occur on traffic through the lags on members 1 and 2 during the final step of the upgrade process. We'll start by checking the running software version, and then the software images in the primary and secondary boot banks to ensure that a newer software image is properly staged in the alternate boot bank, which in this case is the secondary bank. Then we'll run a validation check to ensure that the stack is ready to start the upgrade. With all validation checks passed, it's time to start the upgrade using the ISSU update software command. Note that I'm setting the show ISSU command to repeat every three seconds for monitoring purposes. With the system readiness validation completed, the new software image is now being applied to the standby and member switches via hot patching, and database migration takes place immediately afterward. Next, the crash handler is stopped, system daemons are restarted, and hardware state is migrated on the standby and members using data sync from the ISSU cache on the conductor. After one last sync cycle from the main database on the conductor, a VSF switchover is triggered, and the standby takes over as the new conductor as the old conductor reboots to finalize the upgrade. Once the old conductor finishes booting and rejoins the stack as the new standby, the upgrade is complete. At this point, we'll check the running software version and VSF status to ensure that the stack is operating as expected on the upgraded software. For any questions or comments on this presentation, I can be reached by email at mfern at hbe.com or feel free to leave a comment on this video. Once again, thank you for joining me for this update on the AOS CX 10.11 software release, and we are looking forward to continuing to provide enhancements to the Aruba CX switching solution for years to come.